Our final action just about ready to get underway here today as the Arrows, the champions of Section 3, take on Becker, the champions of Section 6. The winner of this game will get either West Mound, uh, Mound West Tonka or Mini Haha Academy. That game going on right next door to us right now. Mounds West Tonka leads that game one to nothing. I'm going to get that down by the end of the day. I hope. You had it there. I did. I, I hope I've got it. As uh, Kristen Fay is out uh, taking her warm-up pitches, and then we will get set for action. Fay comes into the rec uh, into the ball game with a record of 20 and four on the season, 270 strikeouts on the year for Fay with a .35 earned run average. She opened up the Section Six AA playoffs with back-to-back -back perfect games. Uh, the uh, Bulldogs, much like the Arrows, had to win two games last Thursday against St. Cloud Cathedral to get up here. They did just that, beating uh, St. Cloud Cathedral 4-0 and then 11 to nothing. And uh, they won the right to represent the section as Bailey Bauman will set to lead things off here for the Arrows. A beautiful day, just a slight breeze blowing in today here on field one as Bauman steps in to take on Kristen Fay and the Becker Bulldogs. Fay ready, Bauman's in the box, the windup and the first pitch of the day is a bounce before the plate, ball one. Here, would you like something to block Yes, it? I would, thank you very much. How's that? That's a lot better. All right. <laughs> Want to know the count to Bauman as we are underway here in Mankato. Fay rocks back on the left foot, winds and fires, that pitch misses low and outside, two and oh. Did she pitch last year for them, Bill? Uh, she did pitch for them last year as a sophomore. She's a junior this year. Mm -hmm. She'll be back next year probably as well. The 2-0 pitch, that's in for a strike. Bauman taking all the way. 2-1 and one the count to the Arrows leadoff hitter. The junior pitcher, Bailey Bauman, steps in. Rudy and Blumendahl scheduled to bat here yet this inning as well. The 2-1 offering to Bauman on the way. A swung on and missed for a strike as Bale swings right over top of the drop ball. Two balls and two strikes to count. The scouting report on uh, Faye. She likes to throw them hard and likes to get you on that drop ball, a lot like Chelsea Evans used to. That pitch low in the dirt, three and two, payoff pitch coming for Bauman. That's the one thing uh, the Arrows have uh, done throughout the season is they face some good quality pitching. They face the gal that's going D1 to Southern Georgia next season from the Sioux Falls Flash, so they know they can hit good pitching. There's a payoff pitch to Bauman. Swung on, shot foul down the first play. Count remains three balls and two strikes. How important to is it, Rowdy, to get that confidence going up to the plate, going, okay, I know we've, we've faced a girl that throws just like this. We can hit her. You know, it's something to think about, but then again, every pitcher's different. You know, they all have their own stuff, so. Bauman swings and misses at strike three. Uh, Gilbert dropped it momentarily and throws down the first for the first out of the ball game. Bauman is retired, and there's one down. That'll bring Steph Rudy to the plate for the Eros. The lefty slapper will step in here to face Kristen Fay as Bauman swung over top of the drop ball. Just like we were talking, she likes to use that drop as her out pitch. There's a chopper up the middle, base hit for Steph Rudy. The slapper puts one right where nobody's standing, and the Arrows have a runner aboard. Here comes Samantha Blumendahl to the plate, the Arrows' first baseman. Blumendahl will step in with one down and one on as Rudy, the senior, who will play in the All-Star game coming up later this weekend on Sunday. Gets the first hit of the day against uh, Fay and the Bulldogs as Blumendahl steps in. First pitch on the way to Sam. Bunted right down in front of home plate, but it's going to roll foul. Ooh, that has been a nice bunt. Beautiful placement. Just rolls foul over the third baseline, and we'll line him up and do it again as Rudy stands on second and goes, oh, man, i got to go back. Chuck <laughs> must not be thick enough. It would have stayed in bounds if it was. <laughs> Get him to pile it on there a little more is what you're saying. Yes. Arrow's using a little small ball here to try to get Rudy over into scoring position for Brooke Henderson. Let's see if they ask Iowa to put the bunt down here again. The pitch, bunted uh, into the mitt. No balls and two strikes, and now Blumendahl's going to have to protect with the two strikes on her. Arrow's uh, with a runner on. Steph Rudy stands at first base. Blumendahl steps back in. Faye ready, and the 0-2 pitch. That misses outside. One ball and two strikes to count. Arrows looking to get somebody into scoring position here. If Blumendahl can come up with a hit, the pitch. Line foul down the first baseline and out of play. Bauman struck out to start off the ball game. Rudy took the first pitch she, she saw and slapped it up the middle for a base hit. And now Blumendahl steps in. One and two, the count to her. Fay ready. And the pitch. That's a bouncer before the blade. Two balls and two strikes as Fay trying to get 
Samantha to chase something way out of the zone. Two and two the count to the Arrows first baseman. And the pitch. There's a ground ball to the third base one uh, foul and out of play and we'll line them up and do it again. As Samantha Blumendahl here in a battle with Kristen Fay to start things off. Wind kind of switching around now out of the southwest. That would be blowing out to right field. Here's the 2-2 offering to Blumendahl. It's a bouncer before the plate and the count's full. Three and count to Samantha Blumendahl. Runner on. That's Rudy over at first base. Sam twirls the bat, taps home plate, steps in. Faye Ruddy, the payoff pitch to Iowa, swung on and fouled off. Heads up. Ooh. Just missed him. Oh. That is scary because you know there's nothing you can do to help him. I know. You just watch. It's like, it's like a train wreck. You can't turn away. <laughs> Another ball, the 3 2 pitch. Line drive up the middle, big set for Samantha. Took a glove off. Iowa slams it right back up the middle in the arrows with a couple of hits and runners on first and second with one down. And here comes Brooke Henderson. Bruja will step in with two down, uh, two on and one down as the Bulldogs take the Georgia Bulldogs playbook and having a conference here right away in the first inning. I don't know if you watched that matchup in the College World Series, Rowdy, but every other pitch, Georgia was having a, a conference. I did watch it, though. I think it's <laughs> annoying. <laughs> Let's see what Brooke Henderson can do here with a, runner, a couple of the runners on for the Arrows in the top half of the first inning. One down, runners on first and second. Henderson steps in, Faye ready, and the pitch to her. Ground ball to the left side, gloved by the third baseman, and they will take the lead runner at third. Rudy is retired for the second half. Henderson will reach on the fielder's choice, and there's two down. So the Arrows will still have runners on first and second. Two down now in the One thing I've noticed here is the arrows are. You know, after it right away and try and get ahead. Here's the 0 1 pitch. Line drive. Ooh. Foul down the third baseline. Foul down the third baseline, and we'll do it again. One and two the count. The arrows with a couple of runners on here. Blumendahl stands at second. Anderson is at first. Two down in the inning. Wolber trying to get the arrows the lead. Rookie in. Faye ready. The one-two pitch. Chopper high up the middle. Going to be a tough play, and everybody's going to be saved. Faye had a chance, but could not catch up to it. The high chopper. And the bases are loaded for the Arrows in the first. Here comes Jesse Gergen. Gergen will step in with the bases loaded. She steps in against Kristen Fay. Let's see if Gergen can come up with that hit. Fay ready, the pitch to her. And that's in for a strike, nothing in one. How big would it be here, Rowdy, to get a run across? You know, even just one run or maybe all of them, you know, that'd be nice too, but. That, I'll take all of them. <laughs> Here's the 0-1 pitch to Jesse Gergen. That's low, one ball and one strike. So Faye and the Bulldogs got themselves in a little trouble here to start off the ball game. Blumendahl at third, Henderson at second, Wolber at first, Gergen at the plate, and the pitch, foul. Lifted out of play, one ball and two strikes now the count, as Gergen's gonna have to protect with two strikes. You know one thing about this, a lot of the batters have gotten a look at her already, so they're gonna have a lot more confidence next time coming up. Here's the one-two pitch to Jesse. Swung out, fouled straight back to the screen. She just missed it. Count remains one ball and two strikes. The arrows with a great scoring opportunity here in the top half of the Gergen, Faye ready, shakes up. as the one she likes, and the pitch. 
fouled off again as Gergit just fouling off those outside pitches, hoping that Fave makes a mistake and leaves something in her hand. One ball, two strikes to count. Gergit back in. And another one-two pitch. Ground ball, base hit center field. One run is in. Henderson will hold at third. It's an RBI single for Jim Gergit and the Arrows lead one to nothing. Base is loaded for the Arrows here. And here comes Emily Larson. Larson, the Arrows left fielder, will step in with the bases loaded and two down. Henderson stands. Wolber is at second. Gergen is at first. Here's the pitch. And that's in on the inside corner for a strike. Nothing in one. Arrows on top, one nothing. Top half of the first inning. Go one pitch to Larson. Swing and a miss for a strike. Ooh, she put a big. Nothing in step two now to Larson. Faye trying to get out of the jam. And the 0-2 pitch. Check swing, she went around, that's strike three. And the arrows will leave them. Get a run, a run on th four hit. There were no errors, and three left on. After a half inning, the arrows are on. From the very first pitch, you'll know Wolby Sports Bar and Grill in Holland is better than ever. Serving up homemade comfort food, hot and fast in a family-friendly atmosphere. Wolby's Kitchen, open daily at 11 a.m. with delicious home-cooked lunch specials from 11 till 1, Monday through Friday. Listen to Kayla three weekdays for the special of the day. For some good food, you get your on a Pipestone Arrows. Hi, this is they lead one to nothing. Going to the second, bottom half of the second inning, though, this is Arrow Softball. A balanced offense and defense is the sign of a good team. Another sign of a good team is the peace pipe on a blue and white sign that says Pipestone Realty. Pipestone Realty isn't the biggest or oldest realty company, but nobody works harder than Mike Straw, Kim Schultz, Bob Cleansing, and Paul Nelson to get your home or acreage sold or match you up with a home that's perfect for your family and budget. The sign of a good team is the Pipestone Realty sign, and the team is Mike Straw, Kim Schultz, Bob Cleansing, and Paul Nelson. Proud supporters of the Pipestone Area Arrows. Call that they haven't put anything up on the scoreboard as of. Yet. Put anything up, so we'll go with the five. Now for the now. Or a lead of the plate with a couple of runners on to face pitch, and that misses low ball one. Arrows lead one to nothing over the Becker Bulldogs. Section three champ Pipestone going up against section six champ Becker. Bailey ready. The 1-0 pitch on the way. Change up. That's in for a strike. One ball in. One strike. Boy, Bailey has been throwing a lot of off speed here to the first time through the order. Really mixing her speeds well. A ball and a strike to Laura Lee. Two on, two down. Bailey ready. The 1-1 pitch. Check swing, there's a throw down oh the first. Oh, no. oh, and the ball goes into right field and everybody is gonna be safe as Carly airmailed the throw and the runners are gonna advance. Second air of the inning by the Arrows. And now Bailey Bauman and the defense are gonna to have to buckle down. This would be a time where I would call a timeout. They did call the check swing that she went around. So it is one and two to Laura Lee, but the runners now stand at second and third. One and two the count. Trying to get that third out, the pitch. He does not go. Two balls and two strikes. Two runners in scoring position here for the Bulldogs. A base hit will tie the ball game. The 2-2 pitch from Bauman. Line foul and out of play. The worst part about it is, is Carly's throw just off the glove of Samantha Blumendahl, but they had the runner picked off. Oh, yeah. Schleif was in no man's land, going nowhere. And the throw just a little bit high. Bailey ready, the 2-2 pitch. Jam shot foul into the screen. And the count remains, two balls and two strikes. 
Nothing here, bottom half of the second inning, second and third for the Bulldogs on two arrow airs. And to Carly, has the one she likes. The 2-2 pitch, change up, swung on and fouled back. And a good battle going here between the number eight hitter, Laura Lee, and Bailey Bauman. Now Carly knows how the catcher feels when she does this. What's that? Follows off, a million <laughs> pitches. <laughs> Arrows ready once again. Bauman rocks back on the left foot. The 2-2 pitch. Foul. Oof. Man, oh man, we got ourselves a battle here. Can the Arrows find that third out? Second and third for the Bulldogs. Arrows leading one to nothing. Two down in the inning. Bailey's going to have to get nasty. She's in a battle with Laura Lee. The windup. The 2-2 pitch. Swing! And a miss. Strike three. Bauman gets nasty with the changeup, and the Bulldogs are done in the second. They leave two runners on. They got a hit. There were two arrow errors and two left. Arrows get out of a jam in the second. Going to the third, they lead 1-0. This is Arrow Softball. Pipestone County Medical Center. Hi, this is Abby Taubert, and you're listening to Pipestone Area Softball and KLOH. 1-0 our score as we go to the top half of the third inning. Arrows on top of the Becker Bulldogs. Arrows softball this afternoon on 10-5-0. Brought to you by the Pipestone County Medical Center. By Chuck Box at m &H Communications in Pipestone. And also by Sandy and the gang at Sojo Sportswear in downtown Pipestone. Sandy had a big, huge box of Arrow t-shirts down there with her when she came today. I got my order in for her. I was going to say, she, she was looking for you. She had a couple of shirts for you. Yeah. As It'll be Steph Rudy to lead off the inning. Took a first pitch strike, throws it across. Not in time to get Rudy. And that should be an error on Schleif, the, shorts, uh, the shortstop. On the 0-1 pitch, Rudy is aboard for the second time this afternoon. E6 to allow Rudy on, and the Arrows have the leadoff batter aboard. That'll bring Samantha Blumendahl. She's one for one with a base hit. She has scored the only run of the ball game. She steps in against Kristen Fay. The pitch. Bunt, leg down in front of home plate. Beautiful bunt, the throw to first, not in time. Beautiful. What a beautifully placed bunt by Samantha Blumendahl, and here comes Brooke Henderson. Second hit of the ball game for, and the Arrows threatening again in the third inning with two on and nobody now. Couldn't have placed that bunt any better, Rowdy. That was beautiful. That was pretty. Well, I couldn't complete. You no. see it, though, you know, <laughs> but that's okay. Henderson steps in. The first pitch to her. High fly ball. Well hit. Left center field. Off the bottom of the fence. One run is in. It goes under the fence. It'll be a ground rule double, and Henderson will have to stay at second. Meanwhile, two runs are going to come in. As it went uh, look under the bottom of the fence. I think Brick Fest, they called it a home run. She kept going. And they're going to call Blumendahl Aww. back to third base, saying that she was not to second yet by the time the ball went under. So it's an RBI double for Brooke Henderson. Hey, we'll take one. Rudy will come in to score. Iowa, meanwhile, will go to third. And the Arrows have runners on second and third with nobody out, a run in, and another conference in the circle for the Becker Bulldogs. Well, we got a minute. Arrow softball here on Stereo Kilo H with Rowdy One and myself. Brought to you by our fine Aero Sports sponsors like Tim and the staff at the Pepsi-Cola Bottling Company in Pipestone. Also by all the guys out there at Titan Machinery on South Highway 75. And, of course, by Pipestone Systems. Without those folks, we could not bring you state quarterfinal softball here today from Mankato. Arrows lead 2-0. We are in the top half of the third inning. Arrows, the visitors on the scoreboard, they lead 2-0. Runners on second and third with nobody out as Henderson sent a shot to deep left center field. And now Wober will step in. First pitch to Brooke is in on the outside corner for a strike. Nothing in one. Brooke Wober reached on a fielder's choice. Excuse me. Had a single to load the bases last time up. Nobody down for the arrows. Brooke Wolver steps in, Kristen Fay ready. The pitch shows bunt and pulls it back and takes the pitch for a strike anyway. A delayed strike call. Nothing in two now, the count to Brooke Wolver. Arrows on top, two nothing. Two more runners in scoring position. They'll wind up the 0-2 pitch. And that misses. One ball and two strikes to count. Would you like me to ask them to move for you? No. You sure? Mm. I will, because now they're in my way. <laughs> <laughs> 
maybe it can just stand. One ball, two strikes, and the pitch. That's low and in the dirt. Two balls and two strikes. Here's the pitch to Brooke Wilbur. Chopper to the right side. Booted by the second baseman. Blumendahl will score. Henderson around. She will score. Wilbur on her way to second, and she's in safely. The Arrows have put three on the board here in the third. They are up four to nothing over the Becker Bulldogs. Wolver will reach on the air. She'll go all the way to second. Two more runs are in, and the Arrows lead four to nothing. Here comes Jesse Gergen. She's one for one with an RBI on the afternoon. She steps in to face Kristen Fay and the Bulldogs. Gergen ready. Fay ready. Wolber at second base. Faye rocks back in the first pitch to Jesse. Swung on foul straight back. Ooh, did Jesse just miss that? Mm. Gergen steps back in. Four nothing. Here's the 0-1 pitch. That's a high. Check swing. Did she go around? They'll ask for help. Says no, she did not. Rowdy and I saw Gergen hit a monster shot off a. Of hard as he could. <laughs> Pitch is in for a strike and two now to Jesse. I tell you Oh yeah. Jesse ready. The one-two pitch to her. Swing and a miss. Strike three. She chases the top ball out of the zone and there's one down. You know, that's one thing with hard throwers. When they're throwing hard, you don't have to swing your bat very hard and it's just going to go. It's going to go somewhere, right? Yeah. Larson will step in. She's 0 for 1 of the day with a strikeout. She was one of Faye's strikeout victims. See if she can atone for that here in this at bat. Takes the first pitch in at the hands. Nothing or 1 and 0 the count. Arrows on top, 4 to nothing here in the top of the third. The pitch. And that misses low and outside, 2 and 0. Two balls, no strikes to the big stick. Emily Larson, the pitch. And that's in for a strike at the belts. Two balls and one strike. So you're staying overnight, right? Yes. Where are you staying? Micro Hotel. Nice. Are you really? Oh, yeah. That's We're going to have fun. Oh, yes. Here's the pitch. It gets by. Wilbur's on her way to second. She'll round and hold. And it'll be a wild pitch charged to Faye. And now another runner. 60 feet away here for the arrows. Larson steps back in, three and one, the count to her. Faye ready, the pitch. Jam shot fouled into the screen. And a payoff pitch coming now to Emily Larson. One down in the inning, arrows lead four to nothing. Larson is ready, she has not left the box. The payoff pitch coming from Faye. Drop ball, walked her. Larson. Makes the big turn at first, but she's going to stay there. I think she might have been thinking about heading to second. But Coach Peterson says, no, nah, I want you to get here. In runners on the corners for the arrows, leading four. I have a feeling they might break this one wide open, Bill. I hope you're right, Rowdy. The Shepherd steps in to face Faye. Shows bunt. Pulls it back. Takes the pitch high. Larson's on her way to second without a throw. And two more runners in scoring position. Now we'll see what Coach Bauman has Carly do. I tell you what, when Carly gets a hold of one, it goes a long ways. Oh, yeah. The 0-1 pitch. Ooh. Line drive. Ooh, just foul down the third baseline. Look out. That almost took Brooke Wolber's head off, then Coach <laughs> Bauman's head off, and then the third baseman, Holden's head off. Yikes. The Shepherd back in. Faye is ready. And the pitch to Carly. That's low in the dirt. And I believe the count now is uh, one ball and two strikes to Carly to Shepherd. She's ready. Kristen Faye ready. Rocks back and the one-two pitch. Oh, High fly ball Carly. to left field. Going back, going back, and making the catch of the left fielder. Brooke Wolber will tag. She will score on the sack fly. And the arrow's up now five to nothing. She just got underneath oh. it, Rowd. Oh, that would have been gone. She just got underneath it. It is an RBI sack fly for 
Carly DeShepard brings another run in, and the Arrows are on top here now, five to nothing, and here comes Megan Vanderpool. She popped up in foul territory to Schleif, the shortstop, last time up. Two down, one on, and the pitch to Megan is in for a strike, nothing and one the count. Larson still standing on the base paths as the Twin Towers are on their way to the plate here. Good job, Bill. You're welcome. Here's the 0-1 pitch to Megan. She bunts it down nice. in front of the pitcher. Faye throws, not in time. And Larson is around third. She's going to come in to score. Nobody covering second. Vanderbilt takes off and reaches safely. Arrows are up six to nothing now over the Becker Bulldogs as Vanderpool will reach on the air the third of the inning by the Becker Bulldogs. And here comes Bauman. Bales is 0 for 2 in the game. She would love to find a base hit here. The first pitch from Faye. It's low and outside, ball one. And I tell you what, Megan Vanderpool is very deceiving. She is very tall, but is she quick? Oh, yes. Here's the pitch to Bales. There's a jam shot fouled into the screen. Nothing in two as Bailey has yet to find a hit in this ball game. And now we'll have to protect the home plate area with the two strikes on her. Nothing in two to Bauman. Faye ready. The pitch. That's low. One and two the count. Arrows on top. Six nothing. Top half of the third inning against the Becker Bulldogs. Bales ready. And the pitch from Kristen Faye. There's a jam shot down the th first baseline, fielded by the first baseman. Althoff will apply the tag to Bauman, and the arrows are done here in the third inning. But they put five on, on two hits, and one left. Over the Becker Bulldogs, this is Arrow Softball. The arrows are out there on the ball field trying to beat their opponent. There's an Hi, this is Megan Vanderpool, and this is your home for Pipes on Area Softball on KO Lake. Back here in North Mankato, Caswell Park is the site of the state softball tournament. Arrows with a 6-0 lead over the Becker Bulldogs as we go to the bottom half of the third inning. Now, Rowdy, who would be calling you? Don't, don't, don't they know you're working? It was my mom. It was your mom? Yeah, well, I have to keep all the people at work updated, too, Bill. I have a lot of tasks well, today. Well, shouldn't you tell the folks at work just to turn the radio on? Bill, it just doesn't work that way. Why not? Because you can't. Radio on out there. Sure you can. No, you can't. don't understand. I'll tell you what, if they want the radio, they call the radio station. I'll have them run speakers out, wire it right into the le into the locker there. How's that? Oh, that'd, that'd be nice. <laughs> but it's kind of loud in there. It'd have to be pretty loud. That's all right. We got big speakers. <laughs> Bailey Bauman set to go up against the number nine hitter, and then the top of the order coming here for the Becker Bulldogs as the first pitch is fouled off. Nothing and one the count. Nicole Holden, the batter, Holden on the season is batting 258 with eight runs batted in as she goes up against Bales here in the third. Nothing in one the count to her. Bailey rocks back and fires the 0-1 pitch. Swing and a miss. That's one of the few rise balls we've seen from her. Yeah, today. Bailey has not thrown the rise a whole lot. She's really been using that to change up in the drop here. Still no score in the Wasika Hermantown game going to the 10th. Oof. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Just misses outside as Carly hops up and then fires one right back to Bailey. She wanted that call. One and two the count. Bailey rocks back and fires again. Rise ball and Holden will not chase it. Two balls and two strikes. You know, Bill, all the years I've been here, I still didn't know how to get to the field. <laughs> You still didn't know? <laughs> no, I had to follow JP. <laughs> <laughs> the 2-2 pitch, swing, and a miss, strike three. And there's one down. You had to follow JP in, huh? Well, first I called Merce, and I was yeah. like, Merce, I'm coming in on this road. I'm not sure where to go. <laughs> and she told me, but then I pulled up beside this car, and it was JP rolls his window down saying hi. We're like, we don't know how to get to the field. We're just going to follow you. He's like, all right, that's fine. <laughs> First pitch uh, to uh, Rachel Gilbert to uh, misses low, ball one. Well, you know, all the years you've been here, Rowdy, you've never had to drive. You always got to ride along. You're right, and I never really paid attention. So The 1-0 uh, pitch is fouled into the screen, one ball and one strength to count. So now if we would ask you to come back and help out again, you'd know how to get here, right? Yes, I would. Okay, very good. Because I actually had to drive up <laughs> to it this time. Once you drive, you never forget, right? That's right. Here's the 1-1 offering, a changeup that uh, gets away from Bales. Two balls and one strike to count. 
So your mom isn't listening today either? Yes, she is. Oh, okay. Well, then why did she have to call and she talk to She just got off work, though. Oh. Okay. I'm just, okay. And then just she's got to call sure. my dad, who's on the truck right now, and he <laughs> definitely doesn't get well, this. Well, probably not. Uh, that one is fouled off. Two balls and two strikes now. Well, hello to Kayla's mom. <laughs> now that she is able to listen, being done with work for the day. Yep. Don't forget the arrows will play two here regardless, win or lose. As Bailey rocks back and the 2-2 pitch changeup popped up sky high. And calling everybody off, she will make the catch and there's two down. That'll bring Heather Fossil to the plate. She is 0 for 1. She hit a little uh, bunt back to uh, Bauman, who was able to flip over to Blumendahl. She's the second baseman. She likes to slap even though she bats from the right side, which is kind of unusual. The pitch, line drive into center field for a base hit, and she'll be aboard with a two-out single. What did you say? She's left-handed but bats from the right? She is right. Bill. Yeah. Our whole team is like that. No, not from the right side. She's not a lefty. Oh. She's a righty, okay, but slaps. It. And that'll bring Kristen Faye to the plate. She lines one up the middle for a base hit. Vanderpool quickly gets it back in to hold her to a single, and a couple of back-to-back -back hits here now off of Bauman has put a runner in scoring position for the Becker Bulldogs. Here comes Jesse Althoff. She is one for one on the day. She was thrown out at second base by Steph Rudy on a hard ground ball from Stephanie Nelson. Two on, two down for the Arrows. They lead six to nothing. Bauman steps on the rubber. She's ready. The first pitch, changeup misses. 1-0. Becker mounting a threat here in the third inning. Arrows on top, six to nothing. Two down and two on. Runners on first and second for Becker. Bale's ready. The 1-0 pitch. A little chopper back to Bauman. She has it. Fires across to Blumendahl in time. Nice reach. And the arrows take care of business here in the third. A good stretch from Blumendahl. Digs up the ball from Bauman. And the Bulldogs are done. No runs on a couple of hits. They leave two on. And we go to the fourth inning. Arrows up six to nothing. This is Pipestone area softball. At the end. Hi, this is Brooke Henderson, and you're listening to Pipestone Area Softball on KLOH. Let's go! Back here in North Mankato as Kristen Faye takes her warm-up toss as we go to the top half of the fourth inning. Arrows on top, six to nothing over the Becker Bulldogs. You know, Rowdy. Yeah, Bill. If we're lucky, maybe uh, Shelly will give her comments on the game. Maybe. What do you think, Coach? Shelly? Shelly, you want to talk? <laughs> 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 she says, uh, no. <laughs> of course, we all know Shelly, the Jackson County Central head coach. She's up here watching the ball game, sitting in front of us, kicked back on her little chair, book in hand, <laughs> scouting. <laughs> of course, she's here on official duty this week. Here's a little pop-up. Uh, Faye will call everybody off. She'll make the catch, and Rudy is retired on one pitch to start off the inning. Steph was one for two, make her one for three now on the pop-up, and there's one down. Now to bring Samantha Blumendahl. She's two for two with two runs scored here this afternoon as Iowa steps in here in the fourth inning. Faye ready, the first pitch to say, I'm swinging and a miss, strike one. Back on the pitching rubber is Kristen Faye. Iowa twirls the bat, steps in, the pitch to her, swinging and a miss, strike two as Sam chased the rise ball up and out of the zone and now she'll have to protect with two strikes. No balls, two strikes, one down, nobody on, and the 0-2 pitch fouled off. Heads up. Ooh, that is a scary feeling when you're not watching a particular game and all of a sudden you hear somebody say, heads, heads up, up, yeah. and you're yeah. like, which direction do I want to, I just want to curl up into a little ball when that happens. <laughs> There's a changeup, swung on and missed for strike three, and Blumendahl is retired. She kind of seems like she's kicked it up a notch. Who? Hey. Yeah, she has. Here comes Brooke Henderson. She'll step in to face Faye. First pitch misses inside, ball one. Bruja is one for two today with a double, a run batted in, and a run scored. Brooke steps in. Faye ready, rocks back, and the pitch fouled off. One ball and one strike. Minnehaha Academy has taken a two-to-one lead in the sixth inning over on field number four. The pitch to Brooke, meanwhile, is fouled off. 
In the stands. Into the stands. Somebody got a lucky little souvenir that they'll have to give back. <laughs> one and two the count to Brooke Henderson, the Arrows right fielder, against Kristen Fay. The one-two pitch. Swung on and missed, strike three. And Fay responds with a big, quick one, two, three, fourth inning. Arrows go down in order. They lead six to nothing. Go into the bottom half of the fourth. This is Arrow Softball. Imagine if you. And you're listening to Tyson Area Softball on KLOH. Six nothing is our score here at Caswell Park in North Mankato and state quarterfinal action between the Arrows and the Becker Bulldogs. Section three and section six doing battle here. As Bauman takes her last warm-up toss, Carla DeShepard sends it on down to second and will be underway here momentarily. For the Becker Bulldogs, it'll be five, six, and seven. Stephanie Nelson, Emily Schleif, uh, Schleif and Beth Schleif. The five, six, seven hitters here for the Becker Bulldogs. As Bauman and company will set to go to work in the bottom of the fourth inning. Again, Becker is the home team. They will have the final at-bat of the day. Bauman toes the pitching rubber, looks in to Carly DeShepper and says, let's start off the fourth inning with a strike. First pitch on the way, and that's exactly what she gets. Nothing in one to count. Still no score in the Wasika hermantown game. That is in the 10th inning. That game started late because of an 11-inning affair, the first game in Class A. The 1-0 pitch on the way. Bauman sends it in, and this one in for a strike on a big changeup. Nothing in two here to Stephanie Nelson. She reached on a fielder's choice, advanced to third on a throwing ear by Carly DeShepard and was stranded there as Bauman works here in the fourth inning. The 0-2 pitch. No dice. Misses outside, one and two. Nelson, Schleif, and Schleif, the five, six, seven hitters to face Bauman. Nelson ready. Bales ready. And the 1-2 pitch. High, two balls and two strikes. Wind's picking up a little bit more now out of the south. Yeah. Two and two the count to Nelson. Bauman ready. And the pitch. Just misses low. And the count will go full. Carly gave the home plate umpire a little look at that one. Payoff pitch coming here to Nelson. Bauman ready. And the 3-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike three. And there's one down. Bill, what time do they play if they win? I do not know. Depends on who wins another game. I suppose. They have to win first. Let's uh, worry. Okay, let's okay. worry. Let's get All that right. in the books first. Okay. Sorry. One down in the pitch, a check swing, and the pitch is in for a strike, so it doesn't matter to uh, Emily Schleif. She's 0 for 1 with a strikeout today. Schleif steps back in. Bauman ready. And the 0 1 pitch for the shortstop, change up, and that misses high. One ball and one strike to count. One of the best parts about being at the state softball tournament, Rowdy, hmm. the Chinese buffet. <laughs> oh, that is good food. <laughs> yes, the 1-1 one pitch, yes. check swing, went around. Can't say that I've had it yet. Oh, I'll get you there. <laughs> Don't worry about that. <laughs> one and two, the count to Emily Schleif, the shortstop. One down and nobody on for the Bulldogs. Bauman ready. The 1-2 pitch, swing, and a miss, strike three. Two down. And that'll bring Beth Schleif to the plate. She reached on a fielding error by Steph Rudy. Advanced to second on that throwing error by Carly. First pitch to her. And that misses low and outside, ball one. Two down and nobody on here for the Becker Bulldogs. Arrows on top, six to nothing, bottom half of the fourth inning. The pitch from Bauman is inside, 2-0. and oh. One of the rare times Bauman has fallen behind a hitter in the ball game. Mm -hmm. Bailey toes uh, on the rubber, she's ready. Here's the two to Beth Schleif, and that's a bouncer in the dirt, and it's quickly 3-0 and oh to the uh, Bulldog center fielder. Bowman's gonna have to come with a couple. The 3-0 pitch, that's in for a strike all the way. Your courtesy 3-0 call. Otter Tail Central advanced earlier this morning with a win over Winona Cotter into the section and into the state semis. There's a big swing and a miss. Two. Hermantown and Wasika are playing right now. The pitch, swing and a foul. Just getting a piece of it. Carly couldn't hang on to it. I thought she had struck her out after going down 3-0. But Schleif stays alive. 
Three balls and two strikes to count. Two down, nobody on. Bauman ready. The payoff pitch. Check swing and knocks it foul down the third baseline. There, Rudy should be happy. The coach didn't just throw it right back to Bailey. Gave it to Rudy and then let Rudy throw it over there. She likes that. She likes that. <laughs> She'll be happy. <laughs> Another 3-2 pitch on the way. Swung on again. Fouled off. Nice hands by Coach Bo uh, Boone there. Nice hands. Snags it right out of midair. Another 3-2 count coming. Bauman rocks back on the foot and fires. Popped up. Foul territory. Rudy gives chase. Rudy makes the catch. And it's a 1-2-3 inning for the Bulldogs in the fourth. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left. Going to the fifth inning, arrows are on top, six to nothing. This is Pipestone Area Softball. Hi, this is Brooke Wolber, and this is your home for Pipestone Area Softball on KLOH. Six nothing is our score here at Caswell Park. It will be Brooke Wolber to lead things off for the arrows. Brookie, Jesse Gergen, and Emily Larson, the scheduled hitters for the Arrows to face Kristen Fay and the Bulldogs. As Wilbur will step in, Fay ready, the first pitch to Brook on the way, and that is side ball one. Wilbur on the afternoon is officially one for two. He's been on base both times, he reached on an air last time up. Takes this pitch at the knees for a strike, one ball and one strike, the count to her. Wilbur, Gergen, and Larson. Tough part of the lineup for Faye to work through here in the fifth. The pitch swung on and fouled straight back. One and two the count. One ball, two strikes. Wolver in. She's ready. Faye ready. The one-two pitch. Ground ball to the left side. Taken by Schleif. The, sec or the shortstop throws. Not in time. Bobbled it momentarily. Looked like she uh, was going to have plenty of time, but Brooke Wober, speedy, and again, she's aboard. So I turn to you, Rowdy One. Hit her air. Hit. Yeah, I'd say that's a tough play to, to make as well. We'll get the official uh, scoring after the ball game is uh, completed. How's that? Good so a leadoff idea. single here for Brooke Wober, and a bluff throw down the first base. The pitch is in for a strike to Jesse Gergen. That is one thing that I have noticed here so far in the state tournament, Rowdy. I watched some of the games early this morning. The base running has been horrible. Yeah. The pitch. Bunt laid down by Gergen. They'll throw to second and in time to get Brooke Wolber. Wolves is gone. Gergen will reach on the fielder's choice as uh, looks like Swanee is going to come in and run in her position to line up over there at first base. A little bunt laid down by Jesse Gergen. I did not see that coming at all <laughs> as Coach Bauman playing a little small ball, though I didn't expect you to bunt that one year either. I don't know, Bill. It can surprise you sometimes. Got to do what you got to do, right? That's right. So Swenson, the flex player, will come on to run in her position at first as Gergen is aboard for the second time. Brooke Wolber is retired via the 1-6 scoring play at second base for the first out of the inning. And here comes Emily Larson. Barrow's left fielder is 0 for 1. She walked, stole a base, and scored a run here today. Larson steps in. She shows bunt, pulls it back, pitches in for a strike. Nothing in one the count. Arrows would love to get a couple of more runs, no question. 6-0, mm -hmm. they're on top. Top half of the fifth inning, the pitch to Lars. That's high. One ball and one strike the count. Winner of this ball game will take on the winner between Minnehaha Academy and Mounds West Tonka. The pitch to Lars. Swing and a miss for a strike. The loser of this game will take the loser of that ball game on yet today here at Caswell. One ball and two strikes. The pitch in the dirt. Two balls and two strikes. Larson looking for her first hit of the state tournament. As she steps back in, Faye wastes no time. The 2 2 offering. And strike three called on the inside corner. And Larson will go down looking for the second out of the inning. That'll bring Carly to Shepard to the plate. Carly is 0 for, 0 for 1. Struck out. She did have a sack fly to left, the one she just got underneath of it. As soon as she hit it, Rowdy said, oh, Carly. Uh, this one on the inside corner for a strike. Boy, I tell you what, the last couple of innings, he has really called that inside corner. Yeah. See if the Carly and the Arrows can adjust to it. Nothing in one the count. The pitch. 
Here's the throw down to second. Swenson on the oh. steal attempt. She's in safely. As Swenson, a little slow to get up, pops up now and dust herself off. So a stolen base. Uh, unfortunately, we do not. We did, and some in the very near future we are going to have that technology. We just don't have it yet. Okay. Why is Tree want to listen up north again? Yeah, or what? No, Alex heard Megan Vanderpool's. There's a base hit by Vanderpool by De Shepherd. Swenson's going to round. She home, and she is out at home. They say. Looked like she had beaten the throw and the tag, but the home plate umpire says no. Swenny is cut down at home plate. The Shepherd get her first hit, but the arrows are done here in six to the inning. This is Eric. Hi, this is Taylor Swenson, and you're listening to Pipestone Area Softball on KLOH. will go up against the 8-9 and then the top of the order for the Becker Bulldogs. As Bauman takes her warm-up tosses. Boy, that just gets louder and louder. I know. You can just... It, well, the problem is, is the Hermantown radio station plugged into the wrong phone line. Oh, boy. So they plugged into our phone line. So when we wanted to start our game, we didn't have a phone line. <laughs> so now we're on somebody else's phone line. And it sounds like probably like they were going to tie in to do their game here coming up in a little bit. But their game hasn't started yet, so they've still got themselves on the line with the microphones turned up is what it sounds like. Oh. So we're hearing some of the stuff from over on field uh, three and two over there. So that's what all the uh, extra noise is. We apologize if it's a little disturbing. We'll just try and talk a little louder. Not a problem, Bill. If I, can get, if I can ever get Rowdy to stop talking, it'll be a miracle. Because Rowdy talks nonstop. It'll be Laura Lee to start things off here against Bauman. The last time these two met, it was a big time battle. Here's a chopper up the middle. Wolper will take it on a hop. She'll throw across the diamond and in time to get Lee. And there's one up and one down on one pitch. Now the last time it was with runners in second and third that Lee was up and Bauman got filthy with a changeup to get her on the strikeout. That'll bring Nicole Holden to the plate. She's 0 for 1 here for the Bulldogs. Bauman ready, the first pitch, a changeup swing and a miss, strike one. Arrows on top, 6 to nothing over the Becker Bulldogs, bottom half of the fifth inning. As Bauman works to the number nine hitter in the Becker lineup, the 0 1 pitch. And that's on the inside corner, so Bauman taking full advantage of that inside corner. If the umpire is going to call it, why not throw it there? Nothing in two, the counts. Holden ready. And the pitch. This is high. Holden won't chase the rise ball, and it's one and two. Still no score between Wasika and Hermantown in the 11th inning. The pitch. Changeup swung on and fouled off as Holden gets a piece of it to stay alive. Minnehaha Academy is up two to one in their ball game and double A action. One and two the count. Holden back in. Bauman ready. And the pitch, swing, and a miss, strike three. Two down, and that will bring the top of the order to the plate. Rachel Gilbert is 0 for 2 with a strikeout and a pop-up to Swenson at second, looking for her first hit of the state tournament. She'll step in to face Bauman here in the fifth. Bales rocks back and fires, pops one up into the net. Nothing in one. Arrows are on top, six to nothing. Tell you what, field two has been the field of the day so far. The first game between Lake Crystal Welcome Memorial, who's just coming back into Caswell Park now, and New Life Academy. That was a crazy, crazy game as this pitch misses outside. One and one to Gilbert. New Life Academy won that in the 11th inning. The pitch, swing, and you're going to miss strike two to Gilbert. And now you got another extra inning game going on field two. It continues to push the times back. Gilbert ready, Bauman ready. And the one-two pitch. Strike three called. Bauman gets her second strike out of the inning. And Becker goes in order. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left. Going to the sixth inning. Arrows are on top, six to nothing 
This is Pipestone area softball. Here's the Pipestone game for the Coast. In the, here to lead things off, it will be Megan Vanderpool and Bailey Bauman, the Twin Towers, and then Steph Rudy will bat here in the sixth as well. Megan Vanderpool is officially 0 for 2 in the day. She has been on base once, courtesy of a Kristen Faye throwing error. And now Megan Vanderpool will step into the batter's box here in the sixth inning. Pooley? Seen the new arm coach walking around here. Did you? I did. Pooley steps in. The pitch. And that's on the outside corner. Strike one called. Vanderpool, the lefty. Bauman, the lefty. And Rudy, three lefties here to face Faye in the sixth. Megan shows bunt, pulls it back, and then lines one right back up to Faye, the pitcher. She throws across and in time. But I'll tell you what, she made that a lot closer than it needed to be. She oh, kind of yes. double clutched it and Pooley almost knocked it out. Almost legged it out. Vanderpool retired to start the inning. Bales still looking for her first hit of the strikeout, a ground out, and a pop up. Actually, two ground outs and a strikeout. She is ground out to the pitcher, Faye, and ground out to Altman, or Althoff at first. The pitch to Bauman. And that's outside corner for a strike. And I did not see what the first pitch was. Is it 0 2 or a 1 1? The pitch to Bales, swung on, ground ball to Althoff. She's got it, she flips Ooh. over to first, the second baseman covering, not in time! Bauman will beat it out for a single. Tell you what, Becker just kind of been taking their time. Vanderpool almost beat it out for a base hit last at bat. And Bauman here does, and that's bad news for Becker because Bauman has got speed to burn on the base paths with Rudy coming to try to bunt her over. She loves to run. Rudy pops up the bunt, they get the run, they go to first, double play! Bauman got a little too far off of first, they double her off and the arrows are done just like that in the sixth inning. No runs on a hit, there were no errors and nobody left. Three up and three down for the arrows on a double play. This is Ashley Boss and you're listening to Pipestone Area Softball on KLOH. Bottom half of the sixth inning we go. Arrows are on top, six to nothing over the Becker Bulldogs as the Shepherd sends one down to Taylor Swenson at second, and we'll get ready to get this half inning underway. Arrow softball on 10-5-0 oh, brought to you by E&J Laundry and Car Wash and Pipestone, by New Horizon Feeds, Bob and the staff there at New Horizon, and also by the folks at the E-Work Rec Center. You know, talking about E&J Laundry there, Rowdy, I was there yesterday before we left washing the car, and I had just bugs galore on the front of my vehicle and had no idea how to get them off. Suggested get the vehicle wet and then put 409 bugs are at. So I did that, went about washing the rest of my car. The bug right worked oh. like a charm. I'm a, I'm a car Nazi here. Are you? I, uh, my car is hardly <laughs> ever dirty, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take that and a use it. Big swing and a miss there by Fossil, and she quickly finds herself down 0-2 to Bauman as we work here in the bottom half of the sixth inning. Bales ready. The 0-2 pitch swung on and fouled off. She'll stay alive at the plate. No balls and two strikes. The count still no score going to the 12th inning now between Hermantown and Wasika. Bailey ready. And the 0-2 pitch misses outside, one and two. Two, three, and four for the Becker Bulldogs. Heather Fossil, Kristen Fay, and Jesse Althoff, the batters. Bauman ready, the 1-2 pitch, that's high. Two balls and two strikes. As Bailey has really done a nice job of changing speeds here so far in the ball game. See if she can continue that. Two balls, two strikes, and the pitch. Change up, ground foul. Right behind home plate as the second baseman, Heather Fossil, just gets a piece of it. Minnehaha Academy has won their matchup between Mounds West Tonka. They'll await the winner of this ball game here. The pitch, swing, and a miss, strike three. Bauman with her strikeout, the ninth of the game to start off the sixth inning. And that'll bring the pitcher, Kristen Faye, to the plate. Faye is against Bauman. Pitch, change up, and that misses, ball one. 
This is one of those hitters in a lineup that you do not want to make a mistake to if you're Bauman. She is the home run, RBI, and hits leader of this ball club, the pitch. And that's in for a strike. One ball and one strike to count. Six nothing our score, nobody on, and one down for the Bulldogs in the sixth inning. Bauman rocks back on the left foot. Go a pitch. Ground ball, the third baseline and out of play. One ball and two strikes now the count. So again, the winner of this ball game will get Mini Ha Ha Academy in this state semis. The loser will drop down into the consolation bracket and play Mounds uh, West Tonka shortly after this game wraps up the pitch. Line drive, base hit into right field. Henderson is going to have a play. Nope, she will not make the throw. And it's a one-out single for Kristen Fay, her second hit of the day. That'll bring Jesse Althoff to the plate. She's one for two with a base hit, a ground out to Bauman. And she was thrown out on the base pass at second base, courtesy of the Rudy to Swenson connection. Althoff steps in with one down and one on here in the sixth inning. Bauman ready. And the first pitch to Allhoff, a changeup, swing, and a miss for a strike. Tried to hold up, but could not. Just got real crowded in here all of a sudden. Yes, it did. As uh, some of the Class A schools make their way in for their second round matchups, the 0 1 pitch, changeup, ground to the left side, and a foul ball. As Rudy had already made the throw over to Blumendahl, too bad because they would have had her at first. But we'll go back and line them up. No balls and two strikes now here to Althoff with one down and a runner on. Big time crowd here for the Arrows, good to see as Bauman toes the pitching rubber. Althoff ready, the 0-2 pitch. Rise ball upstairs, one and two the count. And I believe we just got ourselves a winner over in that 11-12 inning affair. We'll have to wait and see who it is. Bauman ready, the one-two pitch. Pitch misses low and outside. Two balls and two strikes to count. The home team in that matchup. Who's the home team over there, Routes? Hermantown, looks like it. The two-two pitch misses high. Three balls and two strikes. Yep, Hermantown comes up to nothing win in 12 innings over Wasika. These dugouts are messed because the home first baseline here. Which Crazy. Yes. Payoff pitch to Althoff. Swing and a miss. Strike three. A strike. Bauman, her tenth of the ball game, and there's two down in the inning. Wasika will drop down into the consolation bracket and take on Winona Cotter. Hermantown, meanwhile, will take on. Uh, let's see here. They'll take on Otter Tail Central, who won earlier today. Changeup is low in the dirt, oh, gets by. Here comes the throw to second. The, th the tag, not in time, as they say. That face snuck in the tag to Shepard. Nice job of finding the ball and rifling it down to Brooke Wober, covering at second. Just a half step late. And the runner is now in scoring position here for the Becker Bulldogs. I like that word, Bill. What's rifle. that? Rifle. She did, too. He used to do that a lot too, you know. No, I didn't, Bill. I never <laughs> threw runners out ever. I think I had like two. <laughs> Here's the 1-0 pitch to uh, Stephanie Nelson, the right fielder against Bauman. It's on the way, change up, ground ball. That is foul down the third baseline. Ooh. Ooh, that was close. That looked like it was fair to me. We'll take it. We'll take it, no question. And it's one ball and one strike to Stephanie Nelson. Still looking for her first here, uh, hit at the state tournament. So this is the only game left to finish up in double A, and the state semis will be set. Bauman ready, and the 1-1 one, one pitch. Rise ball, two balls and one strike. She hasn't really thrown the rise ball a whole lot. Now here in the last couple of innings, she's starting to use it a little more. Yeah, starting to get comfortable with it. Two balls and a strike to Nelson. Bauman ready, and the 2-1 pitch. That's in for a strike. Two balls and two strikes. Two down and one on here for the Becker Bulldogs. Bottom half of the sixth inning, trailing the arrows six to nothing. Bales ready, and the 2-2 two -two pitch. Strike three called, and Bauman strikes out the side in the sixth inning. Her 11th strikeout 
of the ball game. No runs on a hit, there were no errors, and one left, and there goes Teresa with the Pipestone area flag. We go to the seventh inning, Arrows are on top, six to nothing. This is Arrow softball. Caring. It can be a job. Hi, this is Bailey Bowen, and you're listening to KLOH, home of Arrow Girls Softball. When you see my face, Arrows are on top, six to nothing, as we go to the top half of the seventh inning. For the Arrows, it'll be Samantha Blumendahl, Brooke Henderson, and Brooke Wolber, the three, four, and five hitters in the Arrow lineup, as they say in uh, baseball and softball, the meat of the order coming to the plate for the Arrows here in the seventh. They lead six to nothing. Samantha Blumendahl will lead things off. She is two for three with a couple of singles, a couple of runs scored, and a strikeout. Blumendahl steps in to face Kristen Fay. First pitch to Sam. Line drive foul over the face first baseline and out of play. Nothing and one the count. Top half of the seventh inning. The winner of this game gets Minnehaha Academy. The pitch. Swing and a miss as Sam way out in front of the changeup. No balls and two strikes now. Arrows with that six run lead. The pitch. Jam shot fouled out of play is good job by Coach Peterson. He kind of wanted to stick his hand up there and catch that and then realized, eh, I probably better not do that. Yeah. Bill, the wind completely died here. Yeah, it's all, it's just one of those weird days. It's blowing for like 10 miles an hour and then the next minute it's dead calm. Kind of like it like this. The 0-2 pitch to Sam, change up misses high. One ball and two strikes to count. Faye not known for her change up, although it has been working here today against the arrow hitters. The 1-2 pitch. Drop ball, two balls and two strikes. That's what she's known for is getting you to chase that drop down and out of the zone to swing over top of it. Blumendahl ready and the 2-2 two -two pitch. Drop ball again and it misses three and two now count. Payoff pitch coming to the leadoff hitter here, Samantha Blumendahl for the arrows and here it comes. Fouled off, she'll get another chance. Took that outside pitch and said get it out of here. Three balls, two strikes, nobody down and nobody on for the arrows. Faye ready, and the pitch to Sam. Strike three called on the inside corner. Blumendahl thought she was on her way to first, and she'll take a seat on the strikeout on that inside corner. He's been calling it all day, Rowdy, so you can't really be surprised that he made that call. That was pretty close though, Bill. I don't know about that one. Henderson will step in. She'll pop one up in the right field, coming in and uh, making the catch is Nelson. And Henderson is retired on one pitch. You know what, it's that close though, Rowdy, and he's been making that call all day. You almost right. gotta protect. I guess you're right, Bill. Thank you. Now to bring Brooke Wolber to the plate. Brookie is two for three on the afternoon. She's been on base all three times. She scored her run in the third inning when she reached on an air. And she'll take the first pitch on an inside corner for a strike call. Nothing in one, the count here to the arrow shortstop. Brooke Wolbert, the pitch, change up. Misses outside. Ball and right. Those burgers down there are pretty good, don't they? I, I was just getting to whiff myself there. <laughs> on one pitch is a drop ball. For a strike. One and two now to the arrows uh, shortstop Brooke Wolbert. Mix of burgers and sunscreen. Yeah, that's a good mix, isn't it? There's the one two pitch that misses inside. Two and two to Brooke. Again, the winner of this game will move into the state semis and take on Mini Ha Ha a cat. Faye ready, we're ready. The 2-2 two -two pitch, line foul and out of play and we'll do it again. Off the thing. The, have you had the kettle corn up here? I have not. That's good stuff, you should check it out. Another 2-2 two -two pitch coming here to Brooke Wolber, the arrow shortstop, Faye ready. She toes the pitching rubber and the pitch. Low, counts full. Now that pitch was close. Okay. Payoff pitch coming to Brooke Wolber. Here it comes. Strike three called on the inside corner. And the arrows strike out looking twice in the seventh inning, both on that inside corner. It's three up and three down for the arrows. Going to the seventh inning, bottom half. Arrows three outs away from moving into the state semis. This is... I'm Emily Darvo, and you're listening to Pipes and Area Softball on KLOH. Six 
six to nothing is our score as we go to the bottom half of the seventh inning. Arrows on top of the Becker Bulldogs. For Becker, it'll be six, seven, and eight. Emily Schleif, Beth Schleif, and Laura Lee, the five, the six, seven, and eight hitters to face Bauman and the Arrow defense. Bauman will tow the pitching rubber, checks with Carly DeShepard behind the plate. She's ready. Bauman rocks back on the left foot, and the first pitch of the seventh inning is swung on and missed for a strike. Schleif out in front of the changeup, and Bauman is throwing that changeup at will in this ballgame. She loves that one. Here's the 0 1 pitch. Changeup again. This one misses <laughs> well before home plate. One ball and one strike, the count. Arrows with that six run lead. Becker's going to need a big inning here to stay alive. Here's the 1 1 pitch. Inside corner for strike. I was going to say, if he wasn't going to call that one, <laughs> I was going to be a little upset. Were you going to go down and have words, Rowdy? Did you see my arms fly up? I was like, come on. One ball and two strikes. The pitch. Swing. And a miss. Strike three. Three in a row for Bauman. And there's one down in the inning. She is just in a groove right now. She's looking really good. Beth Schleif will step in. She is 0 for 2 against Bauman. There's a fly ball left field, but foul. Into a crowd of red shirts. We don't like red. As the uh, Mini Ha Ha Academy fans watching this ball game, they know they're going to take on one of these two teams later tonight. Bauman ready. The 0-1 pitch. That's in for a strike. No balls and two strikes to count. Nothing into the count as Bauman works to the center fielder. The 0-2 pitch popped up. Bauman oh. will make the catch. And there's two down right behind the pitcher's circle. Both Bauman, Swenson, and Blumendahl all there as Bailey Glove. And there's two down, and the Arrow fans are on their feet, starting the clap. Get <laughs> chill. <laughs> That'll leave for a lead from Bauman. That's in for a strike. No, misses. Ball one. A little high. Full starting that. Arrow clap. The pitch. That's in for a strike, and it's one and one. A ball, a strike to the fielder. Bauman on the pitching rubber. Rocks back, and the chopper up the middle. Bauman's got it. Throws the Blumendahl, and the ball game is over. The Arrows will move it state semis with a 6 0 win over the Becker Bulldogs. They go in order in the seventh inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, and no body left. The Arrow State title hopes are still alive here in Mankato. We'll come back. Final numbers and Coach Bauman, along with our Cargill player of the game. This is Pipestone Area Softball. New Horizon feeds your full-service grain marketer in Pipestone. Green at Minnesota.